In this tutorial, we will be covering the pre-processing stages or scenes in SoftSmile Vision software. We will go over the uploading of a case, model orientation, sculpting, segmentation, root alignment, and base height adjustment. In the patient information scene, you'll be able to add your patient's first name, last name, birth date, and identification code that you use for your cases. We will also be selecting the active cells to upload our upper jaw and lower jaws as STL or OBJ files. As an option, you can also upload patient profile photos, patient intraoral photos, or any panoramic or x-ray images, all as JPEGs and PNG files. These are not mandatory. The case uh, can be uploaded without any of these images if you choose. We'll select our upper jaw. You'll browse for your file, select your STL or OBJ files, and click open. The timeline will tell you as soon as the case has been uploaded. Then we will choose our lower jaw, same process. Select, click open. Again, any images that you desire to upload, whether they be intraoral or profile, any x-ray panoramic images that are also an option. These will be used for visualization later in the treatment. As the case uploads, the timeline will let you know what it's doing. We are in the model orientation scene, so we're going to be placing three landmarks on our upper model. You can choose any of the molars, or if you're missing molars on the bicuspid, place it on the uh, fossa or occlusal surface of a molar, the incisal edge of your centrals, and again, on the occlusal surface of your molar on the other side. It'll automatically switch to the lower where you'll go ahead and place the same three landmarks. The case is now in occlusion, but if the case is separate, and is not an occlusion, you can choose to use the anatomical, anatomical bite correction, which will use the same three landmarks to bring the case into anatomical correction. If you need to manipulate the case, you can manipulate using the gizmo. If you need to cancer the case, you have your undo and redo buttons if you need to execute or undo an action. You have your contacts, if you need to visualize the context of the upper and lower arch. Once you've aligned the case with the crosshairs as well, we can go ahead and hit next. We are in the sculpting scene where you can use any of the six icons to manipulate, whether it's smooth, to smooth an area on the tooth or the gum tissue. You have your sliders that activates the circumference of the slider to make it smaller or bigger and the strength in which you execute the action. You have the patch which will locate any missing mesh and a blue circle will show up in order to go ahead and execute and seal the mesh. The remove, if you would decide to remove any area, whether it's on the tooth surface or the gum surface, and you can reuse the patch to seal those areas. Extend, you can choose to extend an area that may be missing some tissue.
and intrude and extrude surfaces, whether it's on the gum tissue or on the tooth surface. And again, you can use the sliders for the size of the circumference of the tool and the strength. Once we've completed our sculpting, we can move to the next scene. This is the segmentation. First thing we'll do is evaluate the patient's arch. And if there are any missing teeth, we can declare the missing teeth on the chart on the left. So we are missing tooth 1 8, and we are also missing tooth 2 8. So I will hover. And as you can see, the first tooth selected is 1 8. We can hover over the missing tooth icon and just click on it. And the tooth will deactivate and gray out. It'll automatically move to the next tooth and you can begin to place your mesial and distal landmarks over the occlusal surface. And we're going to declare tooth 1-8 as missing. It'll automatically jump to the lower, where we'll do the same thing. Select any missing tooth, so we have 3-8 missing. And begin to place our distal and mesial landmarks across the occlusal surface of our lower arch. If you need to make any corrections, go back to the tooth that you want to correct. So in this case, I want to make corrections to tooth 46. I will select tooth 46 on the chart and I'll make the manipulations of my mesial or distal landmarks to adjust to my desired area. It'll automatically jump to tooth 47 and we'll go ahead and place our landmarks again and select tooth 48 as missing. You can redo any of the arches by simply selecting the reset and it'll clear everything. And if you need to do the same on the upper, just click on an upper tooth and it'll show you the upper arch and you can again, reset the arch if you need to. Now we have completed the selecting of our landmarks. We can hit next. And it is going to auto segment the tooth from the gum tissue and it will show us the areas that were separated and we can manipulate them to adjust if need be. So for example, here we need to make adjustments. We simply click on the spline or the segmented area and then grab the bullets, adjust it, double click uh, on the right clicker if you need to uh, add additional bullets or if you need to remove them, just go ahead and double click as well on the bullet. Make your adjustments on your buckle and lingual sides. If you need a quick zoom, go ahead and use this icon for a quick zoom. Looks like all our uppers are corrected. And our lingual side. So now we'll go ahead and click on our lower. Make any adjustments. We'll go towards our buckle side.
Again, if you need to add a bullet, double click. Once we've completed both arches, we can go ahead and hit next. In this step, we're going to evaluate any the inner proximal uh, areas that were segmented in case we have the gum tissue swollen and we need to adjust any high gingiva segmentation. Looks like it's all done pretty well, but if you did need to adjust any swollen gingiva, you can select the area and then you can bring this small triangle to go ahead and make any adjustments for any swollen gingiva that might be um, not segmented correctly. Once we've completed that, we can evaluate our lower. It looks like all our gingiva is correct. We'll move on to the next step. So this is the trim line. So we're looking for our two to three millimeters of gum tissue to be included. If we need to adjust and add more tissue to the area, we can go ahead and move our bullets. We can add bullets by clicking on the uh, left clicker. And we can adjust as needed. We can also evaluate the lingual area. If we need to deactivate the upper to get a better look, at our lower model, we can. Many any adjustments. And we will click next. So we are in the height adjustment. So we can go ahead and select to add more height to both upper and lower arch, or we can select only one arch by simply clicking on the gum tissue of the arch we would like to increase or decrease the height on for only that arch. So if I think that the lower can have a smaller height, I can go ahead and choose to lower that or increase my upper height. If you don't select either one, then both will be adjusted at the same time. You are automatically provided a horseshoe base. And once you've made your adjustments, we can move on to the next step. It is currently generating a preview of our root axis. And we will be able to manipulate these root axes by simply hovering over the tooth or selecting the tooth that we want to adjust and manipulating the axis, whether it is buccal or mesial distal. By simply rotating the model, we can adjust the view.
as we adjust, you can see if there's any collisions that are being relieved. The red triangles here are documenting any collisions. This is not necessarily a mandatory step. It won't affect the movements that you generate when adjusting your teeth or your aligners. And now we can move forward. And the adjustment is being generated, as you can see in the timeline. As you can see, the timeline is always letting you know what's happening. It's checking for intersections. It's saving the case. And finalizing the pre-processing, it is entering the setup scene. We hope this tutorial has been helpful. Please review our other videos in our YouTube channel.